Imagine waking up tomorrow to find out everything you've ever known, your family, your friends, your memories, wasn't real. Imagine being told that every decision you've ever made, every tear you've shed, every triumph you've celebrated, was just data running in an unimaginably complex program. How would you feel? Would you be angry? Scared? But now, what if I told you that this isn't just a thought experiment? That some of the brightest minds in philosophy and science genuinely believe this might be true? That everything, your reality, your emotions, even the stars in the sky, could be nothing more than a simulation, a fabrication, designed by a civilization far more advanced than we can comprehend. Think about it. If you look closely at your life, at the perfect coincidences, the moments that feel too strange to be real, do you ever get the sense that something is off? Like there's a hidden hand orchestrating it all? This is the simulation hypothesis. And it doesn't just challenge what you know, it shakes the very foundation of existence itself. Because if it's true, then the world as you know it is a lie. But how did we get here? How did this idea, as surreal as it seems, come to dominate discussions among some of the smartest people in the world? Let's start with history. Before we dive deeper into the simulation hypothesis, let's take a step back in time. This isn't a new idea. For centuries, humanity has grappled with the nature of reality. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato told a story about prisoners chained inside a cave. These prisoners could only see shadows on a wall, cast by objects behind them. To them, the shadows were reality, because they didn't know anything else. But one day, a prisoner escapes and discovers the world outside the cave, a world of color, light, and infinite possibilities. Plato's point? What we perceive as real might just be shadows of something far greater. Now, fast forward to the 21st century. The cave is no longer a philosophical metaphor, but a digital construct. Instead of shadows, we see pixels. Instead of puppeteers, we imagine programmers. But the question remains the same. How do we know what's real? In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom published a paper that sent shockwaves through the academic world. He proposed that if humanity is capable of creating simulations indistinguishable from reality, then one of three possibilities must be true. Let me tell you about them. The first possibility is the most pessimistic. It suggests that advanced civilizations never get the chance to create simulations because they destroy themselves first. Imagine this, a species evolves, develops extraordinary technology, and then, through war, environmental collapse, or sheer negligence, wipes itself out. Their potential to build simulations is extinguished before it even begins. The second possibility is more intriguing, but equally bleak. It suggests that advanced civilizations choose not to create simulations. Maybe they see it as unethical. After all, creating conscious beings who might suffer raises serious moral questions. Or perhaps they don't see the point. With all the wonders of the universe to explore, why waste resources on artificial realities? And then there's the third possibility, the one that leaves you questioning everything. If advanced civilizations can create realistic simulations, they wouldn't stop at just one. They'd create thousands, maybe millions, for entertainment, research, or purposes we can't even comprehend. If that's true, then the odds of us living in the one base reality are astronomically low, Statistically, it's far more likely that we're one of the countless simulations. Let that sink in. If civilizations survive long enough to build simulations, and if they choose to do so, then we are almost certainly living in one of them. If we are in a simulation, what does that say about us? Are we just lines of code, artificial beings in a digital world, or are we something more? Think about video games. In games like The Sims, you create characters, give them personalities, and watch as they live their lives. They make decisions, fall in love, start families. To them, their world is real, but to you, it's just a game. Now imagine a simulation far more advanced, one where the characters are conscious, self-aware, and capable of questioning their reality. Imagine they start to wonder, who created us? Why are we here? 
Does that sound familiar? One of the biggest arguments against the simulation hypothesis is that our world seems too perfect. We don't see the glitches you'd expect in a simulated environment. But what if the lack of glitches is the best evidence of all? Advanced civilizations might create simulations so sophisticated that errors are instantly corrected. Imagine a program so advanced that it renders reality only when it's observed, much like how a video game only loads the parts of the map the player can see. This idea isn't just speculation. It aligns with quantum mechanics. In quantum physics, particles exist in multiple states until they're observed. It's as if the universe waits for us to look before deciding what's real. Could this be a sign that our reality is being rendered in real time? And what about the anomalies we do notice? Deja vu, the Mandela effect, impossible coincidences. Could these be tiny cracks in the facade? Maybe we're not noticing glitches because the system is designed to make us rationalize them away. If this world is a simulation, the obvious question is, why? Why would anyone go to the trouble of creating such a complex and immersive reality? The answers might surprise you. Imagine a civilization so advanced that their curiosity extends beyond their own history. Perhaps they created this simulation as a window into the past to study their ancestors and understand how their own species evolved. Every choice we make, every conflict we endure, might be data in their grand experiment. Or maybe the simulation isn't about study at all. Maybe it's entertainment. Think about it. When we want to escape boredom, we create stories, games, entire worlds to lose ourselves in. To our creators, we could be characters in the most advanced video game ever made. Every triumph, every tragedy, every tiny detail of our lives could be their form of entertainment. But there's another possibility, one that's more unsettling. What if the simulation is a test? A moral experiment designed to see how we handle adversity, how we treat one another, how we grow and evolve. Maybe the creators are watching us, judging us, deciding what comes next. And then there's the idea that we might never fully understand the reason. Maybe their motives are so alien, so far beyond our comprehension, that all we can do is speculate. But here's the question, does the reason even matter? Whether we're here for study, entertainment, or some unknowable purpose, the fact remains that we exist. Here's where things get even stranger. If advanced civilizations can create simulations, what's stopping them from creating simulations within those simulations? Imagine this, our reality might be one of billions of nested simulations, each one creating its own simulated worlds. If that's true, we could be layers deep with no way of knowing how far removed we are from the base reality. But here's the most terrifying thought. What if there is no base reality? What if it's simulations all the way down? Have you ever thought about the things you can't explain? A strange coincidence that seems too perfect. A vivid deja vu that feels like a memory from another life or a moment when everything feels wrong. What if these aren't random? What if, in those fleeting moments, you're catching a glimpse behind the curtain? A crack in the system that was never meant to be noticed. Maybe that feeling you get sometimes, the one where everything feels off, is your mind brushing against the edge of the simulation. And right now, as you sit there looking at this, maybe something, or someone, is watching you too.